Welcome to the Nexus Unloaded podcast. This is Will Crozier. And I'm Zach Congonis. We are here to bring you the best solutions to your lifting problems. Through our real world experience, we hope to break things down in a digestible, applicable, and entertaining way. It was almost a year ago that we, uh, after many, many years and uh, saying to you, Zach, I think we had the conversation about opening this place many a times. In fact, just saying like how we don't want to open a gym. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey was adamant. And then one I day she adamant. said, we've bought a gym. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. That was, so, so like when we opened this place, like <gasps> that was the last thing we wanted to do. Mic and drop. we, we kind of just, we've said that a bunch of times because um, I feel like the online space like what we wanted to be, what what it, what this brand initially was about was about, you know, coaching powerlifters and getting the best results for powerlifters and strength athletes. And to do that, and we'll go into this a bit, in, a bit in this episode, is you have to kind of be online because to work with elite people, they're kind of few and far between. So like you need to provide that service online to to attract that sort of clientele. But then the brand grew, the business grew, our offerings grew, our goals changed slightly. Still the goal is to, to get the best results to the, to the powerlifters out there. Absolutely a big part of the brand, but uh, it grew into a slightly wider audience. And now um, the gym came about as an idea about how do we bring people into the sport? How do we bring new people in and uh, and create power lifters out of the average person. And we that, also just wanted a, a space, a physical home, yeah, a bit of a HQ. But um, yeah, it was, I, I feel like we've achieved that now. Like looking back on it, there are tons of people here who probably would have never found powerlifting if we didn't mm-hmm. pop up. Yeah, which I, I think is fucking awesome. A lot of um, people here that wouldn't like now their largest social circle is everyone in this gym. Like they spend yeah, more time absolutely. with people in this gym than they do their other friend circles that they have before. People that would never normally speak to yeah. each other are now like... Yeah, I feel the community culture box has been ticked really, really well. And in here, it, it's a, it's such a just cool vibe that you Even want to like be around Even like our online clients. Like our online clients, yeah, they, they come, come in visit, here yeah. and they travel. Everyone's like, oh, that's... The Yeti, like I want to go and meet him. <laughs> oh, oh, that's Coach yeah. Zach. Like I love Zach. I listen to him on the podcast. No one says that. No, they do say that. Don't there's lie. like two, there's two, people there's are traveling. Two people fans. are traveling to Melbourne and like trying to tee up doesn't. training sessions with Zach, and then he doesn't show up. Thanks, Zach. Good one. What? <laughs> oh, left Nathan. Nathan. I did not leave him here. He, he said, "Oh, hey man, there's the gym open." I'm like, I got no idea. It's fucking like 6 p.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> but and yeah, he's just waiting, uh, waiting for Zach to rock up so he can meet you and shake your hand. I feel like this place has yeah opened the books of powerlifting, opened people up to the world of powerlifting. A lot of people uh, within our walls here did their first powerlifting comp like about a month ago, which was sick. So we went to the novice comp and um, everyone ticked off some PBs and got hyped about that. So yeah, really, really happy with what Max Performance Gold Coast has become and what we've put on offer here. And it's still developing. We're still working shit out. Fucking earth we are. <laughs> um, and I feel like we'll probably be still working shit out. At least it's finished now. We got our prime seated row the other day after a, a good 14-month waiting period mm. uh, since paying for it. And that so was the last thing. That was the last. It wouldn't be the last thing if we had more space because there's still shit I want to buy, but we literally just can't fit anything else. We are decked out. Um, we could fit more stuff in, but then you're compromising yeah, then you're tripping the, over things the and ambience like and the flow that I... Yeah, that you need we space. Have created what does it have here? to do with frogs? Flow. No, you said I you said ambience. I was making an amphibian joke. Oh. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully someone out there got that. Wow. No one got no that. One wow. Got that. Right. But uh, <laughs> Jesus, I can't. I don't know where to go after that. Uh, we are <laughs> downstream. Downstream. <laughs> yeah, we got the we got the the prime seat row that that's finished up um, our equipment list. If if we opened up a, a new bigger space, I have many things I would love to add to that list. Can but, you sense where this conversation um, is going, Zach? No, not at all. No, you don't. You're not getting hyped. What? No, the, don't get. I mean, where <laughs> where would, where would you find a bigger space? I don't know. Where is the <laughs> location no, which has more space? The new news footage. that we're leading to, all this reminiscing, all this is, is leading to is we opened our doors on the 14th of February this year, officially here. We actually mm-hmm. opened a little bit earlier, but that was our grand opening. Yeah. And our, we actually have a new grand opening to announce. Our plans at the moment are to open our new gym in Townsville, Nexus Townsville, on 
uh, the same date. So the same date this coming year, 14th of February, is going to be our grand opening. Obviously, there's many things to do prior to that. Uh, there are things happening right now. There's equipment and paint and lots of different things happening behind the scenes there. Can head removal. Um, that we're, <laughs> you can't remove them fuckers. They're there. They live there. But um, we don't have cane toads in the gym. No, they, we we brush them out. No, you gotta <laughs> hire, you hire an ibis. Apparently, ibis has figured out how to eat them. So you have one oh, really? ibis per gym. Just to oh, that'd be my favourite thing ever. If there was just ibises honking just around the gym, honking around the gym, <laughs> that'd be sick. I love that. Do ibises honk? Is I that a know. thing? Surely they make a noise. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, next to Townsville, it's a thing. Uh, it's happening. Um, we are hyped. The, Zach is clearly hyped. I am, ex- I am so extremely hyped. hyped. <laughs> it's about as far away as you as possible. Jumping out of his skin. But um, yeah, it's it. That's yeah, the new that, opening day. We don't really have away from Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any other new information to far say now, other than that it will be decked out with um, all the same. Highest level equipment that we can buy, same as here. Uh, like it's designed, like all the stuff, there. all the stuff here, all the brands here, Prime Nautilus, all that, uh, the, all, the, all the best that I love to train on um, and think is the best equipment possible to get um, is the theme of the, the two facilities now. And um, we're going to keep that same thing going up there. So, uh, yeah, lots of cool things to come with that. There's nothing. Uh, yeah, no, no pictures or anything to share or anything like that yet. But um, we just wanted to put that out into the space and and share let the know news that it's coming. Share the news. Yeah, we're still obviously a few months from from happening. But yeah, any comments, questions, opinions, Zachary? Will it be the same pretty red color? Yes, absolutely. It'll be exactly the same. Would color you be scheme. open to making it bright orange? No, that's a shame. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> damn, definitely. Damn, damn, damn. Why is that? A, why is why that your orange? Color? I don't know. I like orange. I, I feel like orange is an underappreciated color. Yeah, it's like red, but it's not. It, it's I mean, not. yeah, it is. A, it is a tone of. We're going wonder. to keep with the same, um, the exactly red same. and and dark colors that everyone has known to come and love yeah. of this space here. Yeah, we're the, going the to same keep. aesthetic view as the Gold Coast one. Uh, so but three good times lighting, the so size. You are, yeah, but much much what's bigger. What's the uh, what's Jim? the the square footage? I believe the facility is 550 square metres with 180 square metre space out the back. That's a lot of feet. That's a lot of feet. Yeah. Many yeah. feet. I don't know how many feet are in that. But, but lots of it. I mean, if you've you, you got people to stand back to front. Oh, there's a lot of bodies there's in that space. There's a lot of space. Squeeze it in. <laughs> yeah. It's already hot enough in Townsville, though, so we don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, it will be the same same overall vibe. We've got some cool people up there, which we'll be introducing everyone to over time as well. We have a float your boat. Excited. But excited. Let's head into today's topic. So um, today's main question problem that we have uh, is it all around coaching, which is... Shocking. Like I just said, what <laughs> something that we've been doing for, for a very long time, so something that uh, means a lot to us. Uh, in, in particular, we're talking about coaches, so um, the question that we've got here is thinking about changing my coach, what to look for in a new coach. Um, Generally that the company starts with N. <laughs> that is usually the first thing that you And ends for. with us. Super important. Ah! Starts with N and ends with us. Ah! I'm so proud of that one, actually. It just, uh, I'm, I'm actually really pleased with how quick that came. <laughs> so so like, like I said earlier, like uh, with, with powerlifting <laughs> coaching... <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said before, what do you want me to do? You want me to just pause and just fucking it, like um, waste everybody's yes. time? I want one of those. <laughs> That's my favorite. No, thing. Nobody wants. So we're skipping. We're going. We, we've got to get on with it. People are here, like on the edge of their seats, like want to know about coaching. We've got to tell them how do you pick one? How do you find a new coach? Starts with that. Um, so if you, there's a big difference between in person and online coaching uh, here, and we, really when you're when you decide, look, I want to take this thing more seriously. Like, when did you think to yourself, Zach, like, was there a moment where you were training in the gym doing dumb shit and then you were like, I should hire a coach if I really want to take this a bit more seriously? Like, I very do you, clearly do you remember, remember that moment? watching somebody yeah. deadlift 380 kilos and I was like, the fuck? I'd like to do that. And that was yeah. it. That was all it took. This one <laughs> yoked dude deadlifting Well, hopefully we can car. teach people to make more de- a better, more informed decision than that. <laughs> 
straight <laughs> process. Uh, I remember mine. It was actually just as bad of a situation. So I think everybody will start somewhere, but hopefully we can help people make better by the end of this. But um, I don't even know if you call him a coach at the time, but like I remember back in the days of where it was all just internet forums, uh, I was on like a kind of training nutrition forum thing, reading and learning my own way around it. And then one of the forum like admins or whatever did coaching that he advertised on there. And I have no idea who the fuck it was or what his name was or anything, just the username. And then what like, was I'm, his username? I'm like, I've no idea. Yoke Daddy. No idea. Yoke yeah. Daddy 69, Trend 420. And that, yeah. <laughs> Trend like 420. That. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, I, uh, from there, hit him up for nutrition coaching and got a meal plan. I remember, all I remember about that, I don't remember anything exact about it, but I remember it was the most like rigid plan you've ever seen. Like, you know, like only this, like super clean, only like vegetables, dry meat, like <laughs> fucking oats. Wait, wait dry like, meat? No, nah, and I mean like just oh, you know, like just chicken breast. He, he like wrote in there, meats. make sure to overcook the chicken breast and don't yeah, season it. Pre- pretty much. Like, you know, that dude's oil to cook it, you know, all that stuff. And um, it, it was just super, re- it worked. Thing. I followed it like to the dot, like weighed out everything and it worked. And that, um, it was actually the first, it, it, it was the first time I realized how big of a play uh, nutrition came in, like um, big of a role nutrition had, like, because I was training really hard and then I did that and I remember training got way better. So that was kind of, you know, not a bad first experience, I guess. Um, what was your first experience, Zach? I know you mentioned like coaching. getting the the big big daddy deadlift, but like how did you like? What was the the coaching experience like? Like was it actually coaching or was it just like an online PDF thing? Or no, no. So my uh, okay. So if we go the very like was he saying the very first time I followed anything structured? Yeah, just hiring okay. a coach. So it technically wasn't hiring a coach, but it was deep yeah. in the bowels of bodybuilding dot com. Fuck I yeah. um, it, it was called the. The Hindi, the Hindi something progression, like Hindelberg, it was fucking weird. And essentially yeah. how it worked was the dude had you starting off at a three by three. Then every week you'd add a rep. Then on the next mm. week you'd add a set. And you just mm. use the same weight. So in theory, week one was a three by three. And you did it at like whatever fucking hard three by three was. And then in 10 weeks time, you're doing a nine by nine with the same weight. It was, yeah, f- it was solid f- progression. It was f- I think I got to like four by five and then I was fucked. <laughs> yeah, then you just died. Yeah. <laughs> it was, and that was the first thing. So technically bodybuilding.com was my first coach. I feel Love like that that's the way everyone... The way it should everyone be. Everyone sort yeah. of starts around there. I wish I, I was hoping you'd say like, yeah, I followed this guy named Ziz and he gave me the Sick Mars program. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, Ziz that's actually a really good segue. His YouTube channel when I started lifting, I think. Yeah, the, the, the YouTube era was awesome. It was that, just starting. Start you had like all the fitfluencers who were just starting to track macros. And you're sitting yeah, there like, what? Like, and remember was Pop-Tarts? Me. Pop-Tarts were a thing. Yeah, and yeah. Everyone's like, like, I fit, fit macros, Pop-Tarts bro. for breakfast because I fit my macros. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking I was exactly I remember you got slandered when, we, when you were doing If It Fits Your Macros in cans. Everyone's like, no, you don't do that. You follow meal plans. Ah, I would say it's like just it was like just a, the new thing. It was just yeah, yeah. yeah I just blindly you followed it. Looking back on it, certainly thing. not as as uh, as perfect as it could have been. Um, but it helped me follow the plan for an extended period of time. So, like I say, it worked pretty fucking well. But um, yeah, it could have been better. But this is exactly what Zach said about um, uh, like defining Mickey when you said coaching and 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 or like a, a plan, like a, a, a training plan or whatever. Is kind of the first point that I wanted to talk about here when we talk about coaching and selecting a coach is know exactly what you are looking for so um and i think this starts with like a self-analysis like what do i actually really want out of this like service or this transaction that i'm I'm getting like assess like is my training consistent like do i need somebody just to keep me accountable and make sure and just push me a little bit do i need somebody to um write the most complex advanced powerlifting program ever? Do I need somebody to uh, yeah, uh, give me technique advice? Do I want them to talk to me weekly? Do I want them, to, am, I, am I fine if just talking monthly? Do I just, am I fine with just getting a program that's not really coaching? You know, like what exactly, like, like what, what are the problems, very specific problems that, um, that I'm having and what do I need from a service or from a person t- to solve that? Because like even for us, like we get a bunch, I get people Instagram messages all the time where they're like, oh, 
can you like write me a program? And I'm like, no, we don't do that. Like, I know you can see me resharing client programs, but we do coaching. Like we coach people through their programs and help them solve problems and get around limitations that, that help them get the most out of that program. I don't like the idea of just giving out programs. I feel like there are lots of free ones on the internet. Like go and grab one and do it. Like I don't feel like that's going to get the most, the best results and that's what Nexus is about. So just I think looking inward and really understanding what you need and what like to get to your goals is is an ideal starting place for this conversation. And to go along with that, it's the proof of a lot of people making their choices like that is in the fact that there is so many coaches out there. There's so many services, there's so many coaches to fill really whatever piece that you're looking for, whether it's the full coaching, monthly, just a program, just a cheerleader. There's no right or wrong to it, as Will said. It's based off what you're looking for and what you actually want. So having that time to think about it and make a good choice and maybe feel out and speak to a fair few people is a good move. Yeah, because I mean, like... We get a lot of people with like super broad goals. They hit us up and they're like, "Hey, like, I want to just get, I want to get stronger. Can you help me?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah." Hopefully, I mean, that's, that's, that's <laughs> literally what we do. But like, if you're just putting out to the world, like, I need to get stronger. I need to hire a coach. Like, that's not specific enough because, like, you could end up with uh, a program that's written just for the next six months and you never talk to the person ever. You could end up on a on a on a program where you're talking to the person like every day. You could end up on a uh, a very general program that's like for heaps of different people, a very individualized service. Like it, it all of them are going to get you results if you are suited for that, you know, but it's just, you need to work out what's limiting you from following a program. Cause like I said, heaps of free internet programs out there. They're actually half decent. So if, if you feel like it's the program lacking, it's, it's probably not, it's your ability to follow it or put in effort or just rock up consistently, whatever it is. So I have an analogy. I have an analogy oh to, get, to go along with what it's not crawl ad related. The, Am I going to need my fail or my applause? I feel like um, it's going to be button. an applause button because you have okay. these people, as you said, they don't come in with their specific goal. They go and speak to someone and say, hey, I just want to get stronger. It's essentially the equivalent of going to a furniture store, a furniture store and saying, I would like a chair. They have like 60 different types of chairs. Yeah. Is the, yeah. How do, big, do you how want the salesman to just give you the chair max 69,000? that you need if you're like some invalid in bed that has like the little and the that'd be cool for those just listening I made like a upright motion with my hand <laughs> but yeah. there's so many options that if you don't specify you're kind of at the mercy at who you just first asked and hopefully like you'd like to believe that most people are honest enough to give you a push in the right direction but some of them aren't some of them are going to sell you a maxi chair 4000 with 14 USB ports and two cup holders when you just want to sit on something in a field. Mm. field I literally bit. had this conversation the other day with a, an inquiry call that we had and the guy was like, oh yeah, you know, like I could do, I, I reckon I could do the level three and I was like, you don't need it. I was like, you do not need that and I'm not going to take the additional funds from you yeah. for a service that you're not going to get the most out of. You can start on this one. So I actually downsold him yeah. to a service that is going to be better suited for him. And what that actually means is the retention is going to be much higher because I'm much more honest and transparent with him. Um, and he's going to be able to follow through with it and not feel overwhelmed by the entire experience and then obviously have a higher price tag associated to it. So it means that the retention is most likely going to be a longer period over time anyway. So. Well, that was the next thing we're going to is like – you don't want to buy the coach or the lifter alone. You don't want to see somebody deadlift a big number or just look at some jack dude and go like, oh, well, I mean, clearly they've got what it takes. So, I mean, like, it's, it's not a bad thing. Like, I would highly recommend you find somebody that's done your goals and it's probably it's probably one extra tick on their list uh, over somebody else, but it's it shouldn't be everything. Like I said, after you've done that little self-assessment and actually worked out exactly what you want to get you to your goals, how much support you need, how much accountability you need how much communication you want like all these different what things fancy accessories does the chair contain? how how is it delivered um then you need to look at all the people out there and go like how like what are all these people offer because there are some absolutely ridiculously smart people who are amazing coaches who yeah like they, they're gonna be jacked they're gonna be strong they're gonna have, have all the book smarts whatever you want to look at but then their services just don't really align with what you need like if some really busy coaches out there, they don't have their time of day to do like, you know, super deep communication and, and con, con, you know phone calls every day to 
to uh, talk you off a ledge. So, like, um, if, if you need that, if you need weekly check-ins or you need you know, a lot more support, you probably you're going to go to somebody that offers that, not just somebody who is smart, because there are a lot of smart people out there. So, um, you mentioned about our levels there. That's that's the same reason we have our levels. So, like, uh, on the training side of things, we have level one, two, and three. None of them are like bad services. Obviously, I would not be offering them if they were bad services that I thought you know wouldn't get people results. I think they all get results, amazing. Um, but we identified during a lifter's kind of timeline, you know, comps, off seasons, things like that. There's going to be times where they need more support. There's going to be times where they need less support, more accountability. They're going to evolve as lifters over time and become a little bit more, you know, self-dependent, stuff like this. And so those three different levels are there because they offer different levels of support and accountability, you know, different length, uh, different uh, intervals between check-ins, different uh, intervals between video reviews, different intervals for, for phone calls, all this different stuff. Like it just, they just differ in, in levels of support and communication. So, um, that's one way we try to help people with what they exactly need uh, as opposed to going like, here's our top tier product, take it or leave it. Uh, when you're only going to use like half the, half the, uh, uh, you know, the, the dot points for that particular service. To pull that out a little bit further as well, it's kind of like the, the actual difference isn't really in the programming. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of difference between no. a level one and a level three program, but they look shockingly similar. The biggest yeah. difference is just in the amount of contact, communication, and feedback someone gets. Yeah. And that's most likely the biggest difference between any person's coaching methods. It's like, cool, your yeah, program's a program. Yes, there's definitely better programs and worse programs, but there is many ways to skin a cat. Essentially, what you're looking for is how much time the coach has for you and is the coach offering the service that you need. And if they tick those boxes and, you know, they're not handing out 10 by 10 low bar squats with an ammo at the end, then they're probably going to do a decent job. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good summary of like like just the first couple of steps when you're thinking about it, like of what to, what to, what to do before you even start reaching out, you know? Um, Two main steps. But- Have they done the thing and, and or dealt with people who do the thing? And are they a shit cunt? <laughs> or a sick That's, cunt. This is where we're about to go. So <laughs> or a I, was sick a, cunt. I was about to ask how how would how would you like find a coach? Like if you could give it like two three little tips as to like how you personally um, would identify. Like what are the big factors for you when choosing? Like with uh, other than what we've just talked about the there in terms itself. of the services. Like what what would what really matters to you? So for me, more than anything, so I'm kind of going to assume in this conversation that the person has a decent body of results behind them. Like, you're not going to consider someone who hasn't proved that they can I do think the that's thing. that's worth mentioning. Well, yeah, yeah, the person has had to have done the thing with people similar to you in some way, shape, or form. Doesn't mean that if they've never worked with someone like you before, you shouldn't work with them. But it's kind of a nice sign to be going to someone who's handled a similar demographic or around a similar strength level. Then for me, outside of that, it really just comes down to personality. If someone's proven they can do the thing and produce the result that I want as an athlete, I just have to get along with them. Whether or not their method or their approach aligns exactly with what I believe is the best approach, if I know their result still produces a positive result, and I get along with them, I respect them, and can have open communication, that's pretty much it. I can have a laugh with them, we work on a good have level. Have a beer. Yeah. yeah. You can sit down, and like, you, I mean, you don't hate them. Like, you're not going to pay someone. <laughs> like, if you're like, I can't believe this. Like, what Broderick said, I can't believe this guy exists. What a fucking weenie. Like, you're not going to yeah. listen to them. You'll <laughs> never respect it, and you'll never, like, you'll, ne- you'll always be questioning what they say, and you won't put in the effort. Like, yeah. you really have to, like, trust and, and respect that person. I, I think trust is a big absolutely one. Absolutely a massive point. Trust is. Um, yeah, for me, that's just as big a thing to me. Like, I've had calls, and initial, like, inquiry calls to coaches who had proven track records who I thought could absolutely get me results and going like, like after the phone call, just been like, I just didn't, I don't know. I just didn't vibe. Like we just didn't connect. Like we just didn't, we, I just felt like it was an interview. It was a, yeah, it was you an interview. Like or it was pushing very, down the like, stairs afterwards or you just didn't. No, it wasn't like a hate thing. It was just like, we just didn't <laughs> click. Like we just, it just, it felt like a very transactional, like 
relationship, which is fine. I'm not saying that's like wrong, but for me, like I want to be able to chat to the person and, and talk shit and fuck around, you know, like just like, like, like Mickey said there, like go to the, I want to be able to go to the pub and just be like, have a beer with this person type thing. Like just hang out. Like that's the sort of, and I don't expect them to just spend all day talking to me, but I want to be able to do like have that kind of relaxed have a banter. Um, yeah, banter. You want the interactions that them. you have with them to be positive and enjoyable. Exactly. There needs to yeah. be a sense of professionalism as well as the personalization. Like, you know, you wanna you wanna make sure obviously you're having a good time and there's banter and stuff like that, but when push comes to shove they're also still telling you what you need to hear mm-hmm. um as well as what you wanna hear. The next one for me is like that they have some sort of practical like like actual like experience in training hard. Like I don't expect just because I want to deadlift 400 and that's my goal that the person has to deadlift 400. Like, but at the same time, if their deadlift is 100, I'll probably be like, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm questioning like, has, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as they're like pretty... They need to know what heavy feels like. Yeah, what heavy is. They've done a few... Con- they've trained hard. Or they know what hard training is and what it takes, the, all the principles behind getting getting results are and that comes with the track record a little bit but I want to know kind of a little bit behind that they've, they've pushed themselves and know what a comp prep feels like and know what fatigue feels like and know what a peak feels like and the emotions that come with that be able to like if they can't put themselves in my shoes during a prep and relate to me and help me through those sticky situations that we all run into during a prep eh, like I don't know it's just like how are you going to help me like you know what I mean like yeah. if you haven't I mean, if you don't understand, like I've had other powerlifting coaches that are, that are started coaching and they're just like, oh, my client's feeling fatigued at like five weeks out. Like what's going on? And I'm like, you're yeah, no shit, man. Like if you have, like, fuck. Have you yeah. done that? Like, like you have know you what done this program? Like? <laughs> like all I want to do is cry at like five weeks out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's just like, it's terrible. So like I completely understand when my clients are coming to me at three, four, five weeks out going like, I'm feeling fucked. You know, like um, that's super important to me that they... Um, that they understand the process that we're going through. They've maybe done it a couple of times themselves. They don't have to do the best in the sport, but they have to understand it, yeah? And that's sport-specific skills. Like, actually, they've competed in powerlifting and understand, like, what the, the refing and the rules are and, and how a day flows and, and all the different little problems that can arise with that. Like, that's super important to me as well, that they just understand the sport in depth. Um, do we care about, like, their education? Do we care about like their PhD or whatever the fuck they got? I wouldn't like education is definitely a loose term. Like I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, definitely yeah. not yeah. the formal person, education. I'm not the person to be sitting here saying I will not hire a coach unless they graduate uni. <laughs> like that, yeah. I could not say that because that is, <laughs> I did not. Yeah. But also, they have to be <laughs> able to like. like I, I personally don't see university as the pinnacle of education. I think it does a fantastic yeah. job teaching you how to learn, but I have this personal vendetta against people who just leave uni then walk around as if their cock is about 14 inches long. It's mm. like, no, that is not how this works. You have not interacted with any people and you have not interacted in any sense of the actual realm that you're entering into. But but you will hire them if they've done the Nexus Performance Mentorship. Right? Yes, most likely. But it's like, it's we will call that's it... A, that's a good example, though, of, of like a sports-specific education. education. Yes. yes. Further education. They've learnt things both through a mixture of on-the-job training and education from relevant people in the field that they're working in. I, th- yeah, I think that's exper- a pretty experience good Experience mixed with a little bit of formal education yeah some some mix of that for sure whatever that formal um, education is whether it's university whether it's private mentorships whether it's i don't know just standing in a gym lurking behind a trainer writing down what they say like something something that shows that they are invested in learning the trade that they're trying to make money off yeah yeah and we've already mentioned client results but i feel like that they go hand in hand like if somebody's getting their clients are just fucking killing it, not just the one guy or the one girl that they keep posting are their strongest client, but like all of them collectively seem to be getting uh, results and have pretty positive things to say. Uh, and, you know, they tick the boxes that are also the experience themselves and their formal education. A mixture of all those things, as well as how you get along with them, is going to make the, the majority of the decision here. Can I just interject in there as well and say, like, obviously, this is a conversation that came up a couple of months ago that I know Zach and I had, and obviously Will and I have spoken about it since as well, but someone not hiring a coach because they thought that the coach was too good for them. 
Like, I'd like to get your opinion on on that. In like, I have a what great you would analogy. say to someone. Okay, okay th- 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 this isn't exactly what I'd say to them. However, it's relevant. Mm. So you have two mechanics. One mechanic works on Ferraris. One mechanic works on I don't know what's a shitty car. <laughs> Give me a shitty car. <laughs> What do you drive? <laughs> one of them works on a Suzuki Swift. One of, <laughs> one of them works on a Swift. One of them works on a Ferrari. When push yeah. comes to shove, the Ferrari mechanic could go and work on the Swift if they wanted to. The Swift mechanic probably couldn't work up the chain. So for mm. people who are viewing coaches who are adept in their field and who are very good at their chosen trade, they can coach anyone. And it's not so much a matter of, oh, you're not strong enough or... Uh, at the end of the day, a coaching slot's open. Someone needs to benefit. Regard- <laughs> regardless of who it is. And I know for myself, I couldn't give a single fuck about what they total. If someone's receptive, I get along with them and they enjoy the coaching I provide. That's that's it. That's all that matters to me. Yeah, but that's it. I think just because like we've had the conversation a couple of times where people have been like, oh, I really wanted to work with you guys, but like I'm just not quite strong enough yet or I'm not quite ready. It's like... What? Like, so you're going to pay essentially the same sort of price point for a coach with less experience that you don't really respect or have, you know, an appreciation for or figure, view as an authoritative figure. And you're not going to put as much effort in. It's probably going to be a longer, more drawn out experience because, um, you know, maybe they don't have quite the knowledge or the skill sets that, that a Nexus coach has. So, like, it, to me, that just doesn't make sense. Like, I would rather pay for the person that I really want to work with, get the results faster, get them more effectively and, and efficiently, and then go forward from there. Yeah, so look at the client results, look at the deliverables, look at the systems and whether they work for you exactly, like, uh, and, yeah, whether you can have a have a good old chat. That's actually, like, have an onboarding call. Like, have a call with a person and, and chat it. I don't know if we mentioned that. Like, mm. it kind of is obvious from us saying that, like, I hey, want to be able to have a conversation with the person, but, like, don't just like sign the dotted line and then go like, oh, so like now what? Like, how do we do this? Like, are we checking in weekly? Or are we doing like monthly? Like fucking like yeah. do your research, like figure it out. Know exactly what you're getting. A lot of the amount of people that just blindly jump in and and just if somebody crazy. isn't willing to have a call, maybe look elsewhere. Like if someone doesn't have the time to sit down and have a 10 minute chat with you about what will eventually be quite a large financial and emotional investment. For the yeah. person, I was, like, I was about to sign up. I was about to say, like, depends what you're signing up for. Because if you're buying a 12 week PDF, that's a bit different program. <laughs> yeah, very. Di- or if you're just signing up for like a one off consult, like, I'm not, yeah, yeah, we're not having. I any, mean, but I'm yeah, coming from the lens long... of coaching. Like, if you're signing up for ongoing weekly direct debited coaching with what yeah. you'd want to be leading industry provisions, yeah, for a multiple year commitment, probably. Yeah. Like, if you're signing up for the next. <laughs> dotted line six year minimum that's that's exactly what you want <laughs> six year minimum yeah. with no phone call you know term. that's what you're looking Love for that. so practical advice for when looking at a new coach even though we've covered it all uh, pretty decently there like start off by looking inward write a list of exactly what you are looking for and where you think your downfalls are like if you've been following a program and you're just missing days, like you need someone to keep you accountable. If, you, if you've been following a program and you're just not training hard enough, maybe you hire somebody in person to kick your ass. Maybe, you know, maybe if you're like, uh, you feel like you've gotten to the point where the, the online 5x5 five five templates aren't getting you the results as, as good as an individualized custom program would, you, know, you need to find somebody that can, that can do that for you and... and uh, uh, whether you know technique feedback, the, the, the list is endless of things that could potentially be included, mm-hmm. but you need to know exactly what you're looking to get included. And also, and then, that list is always changing. Like if you've been with a coach who is, oh yeah, sad as, I was going to say who's filled your holes, but that's a bad term to yep. use in the fitness industry. <laughs> if you've yep. been with a coach who's satisfied the needs that you've had early on within your training, it's natural that those needs change. And if that coach can no longer provide the services that you need it's time to move on. Like for me, once a client has been with me for like four or five years, it's like, you've been, it's been a long time. We've gotten some great results. Like I'm not upset if that person wants to go and see what else is happening out there. No, no, go for it. And also it just changes over time into like, like I said before with the off season and like, that's why Mm. we have lots of people that slide from our monthly coaching up to our weekly coaching as they need 
that level of support and accountability. Like you need more, mm. you need more help during Things a prep. Change. You need more comms during a prep. Yeah, yeah. The situation is different. Um, it needs to. Uh, and then also have your list of what you're looking for in a coach. The the characteristics, the traits, the 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 list of results, the, the the experience they have, all the things that really matter to you deep down, uh, the things that the, the coach must have to tick your box as an appropriate choice. Um, and then you have your two lists there. You have your two lists and then you're going to go out and you're going to have uh, hopefully a few different phone calls with a few different companies or, or individual coaches and, and find the one that you connect with best, the one that ticks as many of those boxes as possible. Um yeah, and then it's just get on that phone call, see if there's a connection there, see if you can relate, and see see if you can truly deeply like, have a trust for that person. On if, you'll know straight away. On emotional level. You'll, <laughs> yeah, you'll know. You'll know that when you meet the one. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. It, Don't let your couch you, sleep with you. <laughs> that, that, that's a follow-up. Don't. That's, Massive That one, is unprofessional. That's happening. Well, yeah. <laughs> Especially online, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. I think that's that's another thing to be to be careful of, for sure. Um, do we want to talk a little bit about, like, obviously, if the you talked a lot about, like, hiring a new coach, like, when to change your old coach? Like, is that something you wanted to discuss? I think that's really quick and simple, and it's because we've talked about everything, and it's just, like, if those – if your needs change, mm. if your needs change and, and your situation changes and you – like – like with us, like I said, we have multiple levels and people slide up and down, but other people might not. And then you might go like, oh, you know, like I, I, I don't need to be paying hundreds of dollars a week for this level of fucking premium service when I'm <clears throat> just looking to get a little bit more jacked and tanned in the off season, you know? So like maybe you change that. Uh, maybe you just follow your own thing. Do you feel like there's a, a point of like if you've outgrown your coach? In the sense of like your skills versus their knowledge and capabilities, like is that something to consider? Yeah, but I feel like it's just going to be a loss of connection. Like you're just going to, you're just going to feel like if you start losing trust, I think is the biggest one. Mm. If you just start going like, I'm just not sure about this. I'm not sure if this person has the right things to get me results. To get you where literally you might be. instantly as soon as you start doubting that, <clears throat> like losing that trust. Regardless of whether that's true or not, it's 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 a really tough thing to come back from because it. Or, I'm, not, I'm not saying just quit on the spot and go like, well, yeah, well, you're right, fuck this, like, <laughs> like, but have a conversation about it. Um, that's the thing that I think is really important, and I say this to all my clients and and even to to other coaches and stuff because obviously we help out other coaches in the industry. But like, you know, if if someone's approaching me as a nutrition client being like, hey, I'm wanting to change my coach, I'm not happy, and they've maybe had a, a few negative things to say about their coach and that experience, I always say, like, have you discussed this with them? Have you expressed how you feel? Because they may not even be aware that your expectations of the service have changed and they're not meeting that expectation, or you feel like what you signed up for is not... Ne- like, for me as a coach, I would want to know if someone's not happy with something that's being done yep. so that I can either improve it and ensure that all my clients aren't, you know, being dis- dissatisfied um, or disserviced and... um you know, look to continually grow and hopefully either retain that client and, and just have the a good conversation with them about it or just say, look, okay, you know what, like your expectations and what we actually do are different now and I think maybe it is time that you find someone else. Like that's totally fine, but I think as a client, if you're not happy, make sure that you are actually voicing that with your coach in a manner that's like, oh, hey, look, you know, like politely, don't just grill them because obviously that we're all people at the end of the day and like, i mean yeah. unlike us on the podcast where criticism is never accepted and never welcomed <laughs> yeah <laughs> for, a, for a coach criticism should always be met with open ears because that's something that's going to allow you to make your as long service as it's constructive, better. You're just yeah as like, long as you're not you, just man. like hey man your haircut's shit i don't, I don't need coaching. <laughs> like i don't know I don't, like yeah. but if you're Getting that feedback from a client and you're gritting your teeth like you've just copped it up some hole you don't want something in, then <laughs> you're not going to get the most out of that interaction. Then if your clients don't feel comfortable approaching you of criticism, they're just going to leave to somebody who will. Yeah. yeah. I know there's been times that we've received feedback and I'm like, 
all right, well, you know, these are things that I've tried to address and there's clearly just been a communication breakdown. Like that's where that conversation can really clarify things. If you just, I know it can be confronting and then a lot of people hate confrontation, but I think sometimes just, you know. No, but like, out of the few times that has happened to us over the years, I, we've always, it's always been like, okay, like let's sit down as a, as a group, as a, as you know, uh, within Nexus as the stuff and go like, okay, like, here's something that's happened. Here's the, like, can we do something to improve this or to stop this happening? You know, like it's a, it's always. Is there something we can put in the spreadsheet to open up a communication Yeah, can we answer or... it in some other way? Can we solve this problem before it becomes a thing for future people? Like, so it's, it's never like, fuck this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, At the end of the day, like what you said, we're people. We're not perfect. Like I have made a plethora of mistakes over the last six oh, I years. I do it all the time. Oh, yeah. fucking every second day I fuck something up. But I'm willing <laughs> the to learn from it. The spreadsheet's just, oh. Man, copy and paste and shit in the wrong spot. Anyway, <laughs> fuck. Ain't technology, it's not a friend's day. But yeah, I just think sometimes it's just important that like if you are unhappy with something that you're raising it with your coach before you're just fucking off and leaving them in the gutter and then and then slandering the them to everyone. What is slandering <laughs> them to every other coach as well? Like when I have people come to me and complain about another coach, I always take it with a grain of like I I don't I'm always like, All right, there's two sides to this story here. Yeah. And um I just I'm like, Okay, you know what? Like I'm really sorry that that's been your experience and hopefully I can make your experience better. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm absolutely. never sitting here going like, oh, yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Just here to solve problems. That's what we do. Cool. All right. We'll leave it there. Uh, unless you have any final statements to add, Zach. I'm I thought of, I thought of a, new, a new slogan oh, for gosh. Nexus. Okay. Uh, Nexus performance. Let us fill your holes. Oh, God. For, no. <laughs> for coaching edu- <laughs> Let me finish. For coaching and educational needs. Jesus. On the oh, back. God. On the back. There's that last bit. There's the a dot, dot, dot. There's a pause. Then you say that. Yeah. No, yeah. we're not going to have that. I actually want to bring I think up... it's your best shirt idea yet, though. <laughs> Let us fill your holes. And, <laughs> and then on the back. And then like a shirt with just like holes <laughs> through it and stuff like that. I think, uh, I think it, un- it removes our tick of professionalism, though, <laughs> from maybe, maybe from certain people. <laughs> you know, if yeah, we're talking about the happening. lists. That's not oh. happening. Um, I did actually have, like, there was a couple of things, Zach, that we spoke about off air. Um, regarding just like little segments and things that we kind of want to bring back into this podcast moving forward as well. Oh God, okay. um, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna included. throw this out here so that um, we're holding Zach accountable to not it. Not this. now. Okay, you don't have to on the spot. <laughs> but just just for future stuff, um, some of the segments that we talked about was Zach's facts. We had your um, squared wombat. Um, Square wombat shit. Square wombat shit and an echidna. Yeah, this is with the thing. You say prong. stuff on here and then you completely forget and then it just never gets brought well, that's up. That's why I'm, I'm saying it out loud now. So if I'm everyone, glad somebody's taking notes. If someone has a, a segment, like a fun little segment, we've got Zach's facts and uh, I want to I want to bring that into our next episode. So, Zach, you're going to start the episode off with a fun fact. Okay, I have one for and, you uh, now. Oh, God. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, wasn't prepared, but Zach is always prepared with the Zach's facts. Zach's facts. So my my, my recent obsession music. has been with tying knots, and I don't know why. Mm. I've been making a lot of dog leashes. scout badge. So I've, I've been learning a lot about knots, a lot about knots. Yeah. And you know the difference between a knot that's self-constricting or non-self-constricting? Why a non-constricting knot can be better in some instances? Because it doesn't decrease the tensile strength of the rope itself. So a self-constricting mm. knot can decrease the load-bearing capacity of that knot at the joint, whereas a non-constricting knot doesn't. I'm a bit worried. Why? Like, surely knots don't come up a lot in your day to day life. Well, no, like, I, I made Dakota's Jack. Like, can you hang this thing? You're like, yes, I can. I, I, I made Jack a 30 meter long line out of some paracord, and some carabiners. So I had to research what knot the best. was the best. Okay. And yeah, I found a knot that worked, and then I learned something. 40 minutes worth of not information. Yeah. You should go do Boy Scouts. Go join the local club. Men Scouts. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, I think the boys level would be more appropriate. <laughs> but yeah, that's <laughs> they my just fact. dump you in the middle of the woods and then you have a compass and you just have to try and get out of some shit. I'm assuming that's what Scouts do. Anyway. Um, the, the next segment that I wanted to bring out as well was um, story time as well. So I actually want our <laughs> listeners to nexusperformance.com.au forward slash podcasts, fill out the podcast feedback form and in there, give us a horror story that you wouldn't tell your mama about an experience in the gym or something like that. A funny oh, experience, anywhere. a funny story. Well, anywhere, okay. Tell we'll, us, we'll tell us something. Some... Let's, let's, let's refine that. Tell us something you've never told your mum. Okay. 
<laughs> well, a funny gym story in yeah. here anyways. And a then our job weeks. is to find your mother's phone number and ring her up until <laughs> oh, a couple of weeks back. A <laughs> couple of weeks back. I'm just going to throw Matteo under the bus here. A couple of oh, weeks no. ago, Matteo was in the gym squatting. Yep. Um, Matteo decided not to wear underwear that day mm. for no particular reason. Okay. I'm not sure. But he was squatting and ripped like from crack to crack, <laughs> all the way through his pants. Yep. Um, it's and not then, a horror story. That's funny. Ass. Yeah, I know it's a funny I mean, story. Who saw, who it's saw story his, time. The question is, who saw his testicles? <laughs> no, well, there was no no droppage of the balls. That's um, so yeah, he did decide to pack up and leave the gym. Obviously, pretty disappointed. Well, pick, I think pick up his bait We tried to tie a t shirt around his like lower half and just have the <laughs> like the flappy t shirt at the back. Yep. But I think he was just a little too uncomfortable to continue squatting. Uh, yeah, I can understand. I mean, <laughs> could you would imagine have been like fine. sitting on the other, but imagine sitting on press. the other machines, like when you're going and doing the rest of it, and then you're just like, all right, leg extensions, and it's just like Mateo's butthole, like on the actual. Yeah, we're not- <laughs> we don't enforce wiping down machines as much as some other commercial gyms, but when that happens, I, I would hope. It's wiping yeah. with fire. Oh, God. All right. Yep. All we'll right. There. That's good. Uh, and, yeah, we'll catch you all next time. Red Hot. Thank you for listening to Nexus Unloaded. Be sure to jump on our website to find details on everything mentioned on today's podcast, plus information on our coaching, mentoring, and gym services. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at nexusperformance.aus for any updates on what we are currently doing. See you all in the next episode.